Hey everybody, welcome back to Restaurant Food Fast. Um, what's new? What's going on new? Anything new, Ward? Not a thing. Not a thing? Not a thing. Not a thing. So no new news. Um, I haven't even checked the site in the past week. It's been a blur. I've been back and forth to Chicago and then the holidays and everything else coming in. So we're just trying to, again, going back to the winging it format. Um, and the squirrel decided that today we should cook chicken parmesan. So, since she decided, we are going to usurp Ward's position and have the squirrel come help me on, on deck because she's the one who wanted the parmesan. But this is another one. It's a real, real easy recipe. It is um, half of the breading things that we did, like the schnitzel and uh, some of the fried foods. Same basic process, except now you put it with some sort of tomato sauce and cheese, and it's uh, Parmesan. It's real easy. So we're going to be doing that today, and I'm going to introduce everyone to the squirrel. That's the squirrel. <laughs> this is my squirrel. You've heard me mention her numerous times. I know. Um, she's the one that comes up with some of these ideas. Actually helped us with the uh, entire idea of the show. So um, The ingredients list is going to be real simple again. Skinless, boneless chicken breast, we're going to slice those down. And you need a three-station breading. Um, if you watched the last episode, the difference between breading and batters, this one is going to be the flour, egg, and breading mixture. So we have our stuff for that. Oil. Oil. Mise en place. Remember your mise en place. This is a pan fry, so any little, just a little bit of oil on the bottom, usually enough to cover halfway up your product. So I'm going to get that warm in a minute. Nice. Trying to remember my steps here. Uh, one of the tricks in making things not stick is hot pan, cold oil. So um, with Teflon, it doesn't matter as much. It's just a, a good habit to get into. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to cut these chickens down. And, uh, and I'm going to do the breading. So the breading is very easy. Flour in one. Milk and eggs in another. Here I'll be Rachel Ray. Come you Rachel on. Ray? Come on. Bring it on. <laughs> and breadcrumbs in another. Okay, see you later. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, on the table. No, I'm going to be cutting the chicken. Okay, over, over here. Over here, they could cut it. <clears throat> uh, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs in the last one. I'm going to do the standard, what I always do for chicken, and just cut these down horizontally. The reason I do that is, one, it takes much less time to cook. That's my main reason. Um, How many eggs? I, I, I do two. Start with two. Stew. Stew. Look, no shell. And you also get much more product as you cut these down. So I like the nice thin strips that we always cut. So out of that one breast, you're going to end up getting more. Do I pour milk with the eggs? Yes, a little bit of milk and the eggs mix up. She's yeah. playing dumb. Squirrel cooks quite a bit. I don't want to mess it up. Oh, jeez. That's nothing you want to hear. There's, there's no oops. There is no oops. No, no oops. I've got a pot on in the back there with water. For pasta. So we are going to serve this with a spaghetti product, typical Italian dinner. Does it have to be spaghetti? No, it could be anything. You can actually take this, get some um, pre-cooked like penne or anything like that and make a bake out of it by putting the pre-cooked penne at the bottom and putting your Parmesan on top 
throw it in the oven under broil, and you will have everything pre-done. So that's the other thing about this. Most of the things you do in a restaurant, even putting them together, most everything is pre-cooked. Um, it, it just makes the stages go faster. And you can use the same thing for many different recipes. But like I say, if you've been trying any of the recipes we've done, you should be fairly good at doing this part of it by now. Because everything I do, I slice down like this for time. Let's see if I can get one more out of this. Yeah, ta-da. So there. Chicken is all cut up. That pan should be warm. Squirrel, you want to put some oil in there? Sure, I can do on the pots. A little bit more. That's good. Now keep that oil out because as you bread these, um, and start frying them off. You're not going to be able to fry all these off in one shot, so the, the breading is going to pick up a little of the oil, so you're going to have to add more. Jeffrey? So don't overcrowd the pan with the chicken. Yes. Do not hit me with that. Can I have a one? Paper towel. Paper towel, please. We put the paper towels on a wooden spindle now, so they can't throw them and hit me in the head. Well, they can, but it puts a long delay on the show. Jeffrey, I just need one. Mm -hmm. Don't hit me with that either. <laughs> Stop it. Ta da! Is your bread done? Yes. We'll bring that over here. So, standard breading setup flour, eggies. Eggies? Flour, flour, egg, and bread. Bread. Thank you. So just plain egg? Egg and milk, I'm sorry. Um, I started with two eggs um, and a little bit of milk. I don't know how much you put in. Well, it's that just, amount. Yeah, it's just to, <laughs> that amount. No, when I said whoa, that was oh. a lot. Okay. So I'm going to let the squirrel bread that. I am? Yeah, sure. I will get you something. What first? Oh, from here to here or from here? I'm going to pull this pan off the heat because my oil is going to explode. Left to right. This your, your, your left. left. <laughs> your left. Okay, so what am I going to do with this after I'm done? You're going to do a standard procedure and put them in here, on here, around here, somewhere. Oh. Okay. That's it. That's pretty much it. Standard breading procedure. Chris, so no, I didn't SPB. season the flour at all because the breadcrumbs are seasoned. Um, plus, it's going to go in with it's sauce. The SBP standard breading procedure. <laughs> okay, Rachel. <laughs> I didn't say E B O O yet. <laughs> <laughs> Water's boiling. I'm going to put pasta on. If I can remember where I put the pasta. Ah. Spaghetti. We'll do two pounds. Sure, we'll do two pounds. Four. There's one. Okay, that piece is all really thick, this piece. Yeah. Some of them are. They're not uniform. Now, here's the... Does your pasta stick together when you cook it? I hear a lot of people talking about that. Yes. If your pasta sticks together, there's only one reason. Adding oil to it won't fix it. None of that works. Um, adding the oil, think about what you do when you put oil in water. It flows to the top. So basically what it does is just when you pull the pasta out, um, you might get a little bit of flavor to it if you're using olive oil, but it's not going to make that pasta not stick together. Stir. 
I'm using a carving fork. And basically, until this pasta is completely down, you don't want to just drop a box in there and leave it alone because it's all going to be one great big hunk of pasta. So you just stir it. I read and somewhere you if, you, stir it. if you put vinegar in the water, it will not make your pasta stick together. Um, that might work. I'm I, not it does sure. work because I tried it. Oh, okay. Well, the squirrel says. And this is what you get when you do this. You get break. If you do it, yes. If you do this incorrectly, which I do constantly, you will get the uh, club fingers, because you're supposed to use dry ingredients with one hand, wet ingredients with the other, and that stops you from getting that club finger. Um, but I like it. <laughs> squirrel likes the club finger, so. Where's the club foot? Once. Put them once. If you mess with them too much, the breading's going to fall off. So make sure it's sizzled when you put it in the pan because that's going to set that breading. And then let it sit there until it's got the color you want on it. Flip it one time, let it sit there, and then you're pretty much done with it. You can, this is a good way to do any of the casserole type products, uh, type cuisine, any of those things. If you break it down into what it normally is, um, there's another one, I forget the name of PM, yeah. where you pound out the breast and roll it and flour it and everything. If you do it in a layer, we've talked about this before, and turn it into a casserole, it's much faster, um, and you get the same flavor without having to do all the production. So unless you're looking to make the real pretty production, I look pretty easy to eat. The pasta should be about done. Almost. Almost. Yeah, types of pasta, uh, brand names. Some are better than others in flavor wise. Cooking, there's no difference. It's all the same. Um, just stir. As long as you stir your pasta, it's not going to clump up. Yes, we all done with that. I'm going to start putting this together. A little bit of sauce in the bottom of your pan. Kind of enough to, to cover it. And then you just drop in your chicken bits. Now, like I say, this is very quick because the chicken's already cooked. So you're putting this in here to heat the sauce and to melt the cheese. batch and while that's doing you want to put more in yours um, trick for pasta if you have to store it at all I put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pot I've drained the pasta I'm just gonna put it back in that pot and hit it with olive oil again this is if you work in an Italian restaurant, you cook pasta off in massive quantities. And it can be stored just by doing this. You basically shock it under cold water, put it, some oil on it, and set it in the fridge. And tomorrow all I have to do is pick it up, dunk it in the water to heat it up, and it's ready to go. Could you use butter instead? Yes, you can. Butter is actually a real neat trick to make your pasta taste very rich. So if you want to serve somebody a plate of pasta that, with just sauce, you just put a little bit of butter into it and it'll make it taste real rich. I'm not really good with these things. Well, oh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. Give me the damn thing. <laughs> You're holding the wrong side. Okay. No, I need them the right way. They're hard to grasp when they're like that. Well, that's good. I wish squirrels got a way to... When you're using tongs, particularly with breading, the object is not to grab them sideways. Slide the yeah, tongs under it. Out the pan. Pick them up and flip them like that. Away that from way, so you don't get burnt. Well, away from them so you don't get burnt, plus you're not grabbing them like this and getting all the bread off. And that's it. Now, you see, well, we those started ones are with. are low calorie without those less bread. <laughs> less carbs. We started with 
a bunch of oil in here. Second batch, the oil's gone. So for our next batch, we have to add oil. We're, we're back. Um, cheese. I have a mixture of mozzarella, Monterey Jack, and Colby. And that's what I'm layering this with. So, first layer's down. As you can see it's filled up nice. Did you put more oil in it? Yes, I did. Okay. 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 Lots of cheese. Is there an advantage to using shredded as opposed to slapped O cheese? No. Traditionally, what they do with this is this is a a la minute meal. So they do these chickens, chicken pieces when you order. Saute them off real quick, then they get a monkey dish. All you do is put some of the sauce down, throw the chicken on it, cover it with a couple pieces of provolone, throw more sauce on it, cover it with Parmesan, you're done. Throw it under a broiler just to heat everything through, and that's the way they serve. So I put the cheese that's going to melt on there. Now I'm going to put some parm on here. Ta-da! I will, as soon as I finish this She did something. All right. Got the sauce in there. Shake it around a little bit to even it out. Ta da! Look at that. Look at that. Make sure they're all nice and brown and you're good to go. And then you do it again. Good point, Jeffrey brought up, and uh, I don't know if we would have addressed that. You can, the depth of your casserole depends on how long you need to cook it. Um, even though this is already pre-cooked, the cheese won't melt and the sauce won't get hot for a certain amount of time. If you use a very high casserole for a pot and cook this deep, you have to leave it in the oven a lot longer. If you use a single layer, it's done now. So if you're cooking for yourself, say just for lunch, you decide I want farm. Take your chicken breast, cut it in half, bread it, fry it off. Use as shallow a pan as you can, and just put a single layer of cheese and some sauce over it, and that's it. And it'll be done under the broiler in just a couple minutes. This is going to take, I guess, about 10 minutes in the broiler to heat all the way through. There you go, stagger them on up. <clears throat> Ta da! There you go, two layers. We'll use the rest of this cheese. Lots of cheese. Again, use whatever cheese you like. You can, like I say, this recipe changes completely. You can take this, the chicken, the same way, put stuffing in it, and gravy. There you go. It's just a quick way to, to have a meal. Top this off with Romano. Now it goes to the broiler. I've got the rack set real high. This is right underneath the broiling elements. So it's going to get surface heat just blasted at it. 
Now if you move your rack down, it's going to take longer to brown it, but it's going to heat through more. So just think of where your heat's coming from. Okay, we're having a debate because I called this um, Parmesan. It's not Parmesan, it's Romano. Um, Picorino Romano, it's sheep's milk. Uh, the taste is similar. Uh, a lot of people use them as the same cheese. They do taste different, a little bit. Um, I prefer Romano, so even if a recipe calls for uh, Parmesan, I would generally use Romano. It's a little sharper, a little tangier to me, so. But yes, I called it Parmesan. It really is. It's Romano. Um, general populace think of grated cheese. Okay, That's we're back right through the magic of editing. Um, this actually didn't take very long at all. Got a good, good shot of this. It's this is exactly what you're looking for for the top to be crusted. Um, the cheese is starting to, it starting to has melted down. Um, you got a nice color to it, and that's it. It's ready to go. Things, no, no, no. I'm saying no to the Wookie because he's standing up patting his belly. He's not eating any of this. So. But that's it. That's how quick and simple you can do a parm in your own house. Um, very fast, very easy. You've seen how to do. We've cooked this all before. It's just putting it together with different ingredients. Um, kind of the basis of the show. But other than that, let's see, you can get hold of us at restaurantfoodfast.com, leaving comments, or you can go to restaurantfoodfast at gmail.com, or you can Twitter Twitter us at restaurant underscore food. Um, any of those ways are completely acceptable for us to get ideas of what you want us to cook. Um, we're thinking about new series, series of recipes on the show trying to get some coherency to what we're cooking. Right now we're just picking the stuff out of the air and cooking it. Um, and we keep throwing around just types of foods. Doing Middle Eastern food, doing this, that, and the other, and we never get around to it. But uh, if you have anything you want, you know, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to cook it. And now you know when I talk about the squirrel, that's the squirrel. And that's pretty much it, I think. Bye -bye. Appreciate everybody being here. See ya. Mm -hmm.